Welcome to Lecture 27 of Biology 115, entitled Biomes Slash Aquatic Ecology. As we move forward and close off Biology 115, we've gone from a very small-scale look at ecology and brought ourselves to a much broader view of the subject of ecology, which is just basically the study of interactions. And this is something we're going to reiterate in this introductory flowchart to this lecture. So we'll entitle this first flowchart introduction just to ground ourselves on the basic idea and premises behind this lecture specifically. Again, we have to always go back to that big topic at hand. The last couple of lectures have been all devoted to ecology, the study of interactions, and we're going to define ecology one more time just to make sure we understand and ground our knowledge on a definitive definition of this subject. Ecology is all about interactions. This is something we've said over and over and over again. And so interactions are always between things. And this is specifically going to be in ecology between organisms, so ORGS for organisms, and their environment. We saw and have seen great amount of influence from the environment, and we're going to continue seeing that in this lecture series on the biomes and within aquatic ecology altogether. In addition, in ecology, so far, we have certainly established a very strong, a very well-established, well-put hierarchy and a hierarchical system, meaning that we've looked briefly at the organismal ecology. A lot of that was done early on in this semester. We're looking at microbiology and cell biology. And more recently, we've moved forward to the population side of ecology, and we had a whole lecture on population ecology. We continued that study, went a little broader, and went to the community side of ecology. Look how we're making a hierarchy right now. We're going from very specific to broader and broader and broader. After community ecology, we looked at the ecosystem as a whole. We really, really dissected those abiotic factors within the ecosystem. And now we're looking at two major hierarchical components. Namely, the landscape ecology is going to be of interest to us, and also uh, the broadest form of ecology, let's say, known as global ecology. When we think of these latter two right here, landscape ecology can just be equated to the connections between different ecosystems. So we'll write that down as connections between again, between connections, interactions, always showing up between different ecosystems, so ecosys for ecosystems, and global ecology is just equal to studying the biosphere as a whole and understanding that everything within global ecology encompasses all of the, the sub-components of this ecological hierarchy that we've established. Furthermore, much of this lecture, about half of it, is going to be devoted to understanding a key component of landscape ecology, a key component of global ecology as well, and that component is something for the first time we're going to be looking at known as climate. So everybody's heard of climate. They know that climate is related to weather, but what we're going to be understanding first is the basic ecological definition of climate, and that is the following. Climate will always refer to long-term, that's the key here, it has to be long-term, long-term prevailing, meaning that it's usually always there, weather conditions, and that's something we know, climate is related to weather conditions, but now we've added this idea of being long-term and ever so prevailing, and now we also have to stipulate it in a given area, of course. So we can't just think of the climate of the world, of the biosphere. We have to look at parts of the biosphere. We have to look at landscapes and ecosystems more specifically. So it's in a given area, and it's long-term, and it's about the weather. That's the climate. And we all understand that based off of what we've seen all of our lives in terms of the weather. What's important to understand about the climate is that climate is actually going to be considered the most significant. It's a hugely significant factor. It's the most significant factor in regards to, or we can say, on the distribution. That's the key word here, on the distribution of organisms. 
So it's not on, let's say, the uh, adaptations of organisms per se, or even the uh, interactions of organisms, but what we're talking about are distribution of organisms. Do we have a highly diverse organismal society, or do we have a less diverse society? The factor that's going to attribute to this most significantly will be what is the climate of that given area, and that's what we'll be looking at on two different scales, and scale is a big idea in climate study. More specifically, we'll be looking at two types of scale, both the macro climate of regions, of given areas, let's say, and also the micro climate. Microclimate we won't be spending too much time on. We'll be devoting a lot of time on the macroclimate because, again, we're looking at biomes. And we'll understand what biomes are a little bit later since this lecture is entitled Biomes and Aquatic Ecology. But biomes will definitely rely on macroclimate, which will be the global, we consider it the global, regional, and landscape level, let's say. It encompasses all of those, global, regional, landscape, level. And when we mean by level, we mean level of study specifically. We're studying the climate on a global scale, on a regional scale, and on a landscape scale, as denoted over here in our hierarchical system. And lastly, in microclimate study, we are now looking at a much more localized region. Specifically, I'll give you an example later on in the flowcharts, but we're looking at localized patterns more specifically, and these patterns will be affecting specific communities. So, uh, effect, effects, we'll say affects specific communities, as opposed to the fact that these macroclimate studies affect large-scale global, regional, and landscape distributions of ecosystems, uh, communities, populations, even organisms specifically. So this is what we're going to ground the rest of our lecture on. We're going to be spending a good amount of time on climate, and then we'll shift to aquatic ecology a little bit later.